Midnight Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, ladies and gentlemen, it was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazines, and it is also Memorial Day weekend, which means apparently these, these days uh, two major events going on at the same time. WWE is going to do their Saudi show now called King and Queen of the Wing Ring. Sorry, not Wing. Sorry. Um, and AEW is going all in or double or nothing out in Vegas, aka the new home of WrestleMania, coming up next year. So it is a double preview show today. King Ricky and Willie T, sit back, relax, grab your T-bone steak, cheese, eggs, and Welch's grape. It is Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 376, exclusively on Wrestle Addict Radio. And it starts right now. It's no other grape than Welch's. It's very true. You know, I'm going to see how many Biggie uh, lyrics I can just, like, slip into today. Yeah, I caught the Biggie reference, but I don't know what it was reference in reference to. Because today's his birthday, that's why. Oh. <laughs> that's why. That's why. A little, Happy birthday, Biggie. Little... Today's my brother's birthday, too. Wow, your brother and Biggie have something in common. They have the same birthday. Yeah. There you go. There's that. There's yeah. that. Ladies... About it. Though. Yeah, it's, I, I feel like that's <laughs> it. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> we can't rap worth a damn. Um, <laughs> welcome oh, to the Kings chance. of the Rings podcast, episode 376. Willie T and King Ricky Rose here. Thank you guys for joining us. If you guys like what you are listening to or what you are watching right now, if you're watching us live on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube, please like, share, subscribe, leave us a five-star review. The links to all of that are in the description below. We would have uh, our, our third person, Kayfabe, but Kayfabe uh, is literally out there searching for for very you, so it is a two man show today because K K Fabe was too busy twerking to BBL Jersey for the last couple of weeks and threw out their back. Sorry to say, get well soon, K on the Eddie Kingston uh, diet these days. But with me, as always, the uh, the infamous ghostwriter to Harrison Butker's uh, speech, Will Tarashak, how are you? You know, I, I, are we going to talk about this now? No, Harrison no, we're I, not. I was just using you as a okay, joke. I, I didn't think half of what he said was that bad. And the other half is just like, oh, you, you were almost, you were so close. <laughs> you were so close. And then it's just like, oh, yeah, dude, you're a kicker. <laughs> okay, pat on the head. Good job. Now go go back to kicking balls. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's me. It's me. It's Willie. I don't know if you know it's Ricky, but I'm cooler than Dave Batista's belly button tattoo. So yeah, I'm excited to talk about what are we talking about? Double or nothing? All out? All in? Oh all yeah, in, it, it is it is it is King and Queen in the ring and, and double or nothing uh this week. King and Queen go all out in the ring. Oh, I might have to change it for that. I like that. That's a long <laughs> title, but yeah, King and Queen go, go all, all out in the, in the ring, ring or nothing. <laughs> or nothing. <laughs> or nothing. No, the crazy thing about Harrison Bucker, real quick before we actually get into the scraps, uh all of the stuff the when you realize that his mom is like an award-winning physicist like a re- so is terrence howard come on no man. no no that is the- <laughs> <laughs> it just makes it all the more weird i'm just like huh okay interesting um be but as a mate ladies and gentlemen we are here to talk about the scraps and the world of wrestling and it is going to be up on a three-day weekend here in the states i know they just had a three-day weekend up in canada happy belated victoria day everybody uh but we are doing a three-day weekend memorial day weekend and it is a big week for wrestling this has been the this has been going on uh for the last couple of weeks where ww and aew somehow at the beginning of summer do this massive blowout of the weekend and try to compete against each other but kind of not really because there is there are two different leagues and there are two different levels that they're competing on uh in and of itself so wwe's king and queen of the ring uh officially is going to be on saturday uh in saudi arabia starting at 1 p.m and then we have AEW double or nothing traditional pay-per-view on sunday around 8 p.m. Will Terrence, like I know you are probably not even going to take your day off on Monday and watch AW Double, Double or Nothing, are you? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> actually, I have a wedding this weekend, so I'm not going to be able to watch. Oh, sh- yeah, we're waiting on Friday. Oh. So I'm not going to be able to watch the, the Saudi show until Sunday, and then I fly out to Austin first thing Monday morning. What are you doing, South by Southwest or something? Uh, no, uh, different conference, different conference oh, for okay. work. Jesus. So that's that's going to be fun. You and Charles so no, are going to miss I'm each not other. not watching Double or Nothing. Huh? You and Charles are going to miss each other. 
Where's Charles? Oh, Charles is flying up here. Charles has a wedding to go to up here. I'm picking him up from the airport on Thursday. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I got the I'm, my my weddings in um, New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah, Oof. on Friday. Have fun with that drive. It's not bad. It's like three hours. Oh, two and a half. I it was yeah. a lot worse than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's more like the halfway point up to up to Boston. Yeah, like two two and a half. Oh, French, you're moving up the high speed internet now. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> my trash lately. Oh, Fretz, you got fiber optics up there? Do you even know what that is? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think where Fretz is at, so I'm not, I'm yeah, not exactly I was say sure. Probably not. <laughs> I'm not exactly like, did sure. Did you guys just get light bulbs for your electricity? <laughs> he's on a beach. He's not in a cave. <laughs> There's a big <laughs> difference. There's a big difference. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get into uh, our first of the shows. It is the King and Queen of the Ring. There's been a lot of talk. There's been a lot of emphasis lately in the uh, on commentary in particular. I do want to start out with this. There's been a lot of talk in, on commentary in particular about how prestigious the King and Queen... Fiber is just starting up there. Uh, how prestigious the King and Queen of the Ring tournament has been historically. And I am one to say no, no, that's not, that has almost never been the case. There's never been really any great stakes for King and Queen of the Ring. The people who have succeeded as King yeah. of the Ring, because, I mean, you had Queen Zelina, that's all we got. Uh, the people who succeeded as King of the Ring got lucky, okay? Stone Cold Steve Austin won because Triple H had to take the fall for the curtain call. Yeah, and Stone Cold <laughs> didn't get honestly. You know why they? You know why they hype up uh, the 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 Austin three sixteen moment as the one that made Austin take off? Because it's King of the Ring. Well, no, because the actual one that made him take off was the Pillman's got a gun angle. Like that, <laughs> that angle. Trust me, I watched it recently. Like, I, like it's been the last year and a half. Yeah. Uh, Austin, after winning King of the Ring in ninety six, there weren't t shirts or chants in the crowd until months later. Yeah. So that was June ninety six. Fast forward to September ninety six, you got the Pillman's got a gun angle. And that is when Austin really started taking shape and getting into that I don't give a fuck attitude, started being more brash and attacking people backstage, you know, flipping the bird McMahon, flipping the bird in general. Yeah. So it didn't really happen until a little bit later. King of the Ring, like we look back as like, yeah, okay, that's the start of it. Cool. But it didn't really, in the immediate impact, really do anything for him. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really do much for anybody at all. It's just kind of a gimmick. Like, King Corbin went... Except no, King Booker. King Booker's the most successful king of all of them. King, you know. Yeah. Uh, king yeah. Corbin went nowhere. King Mabel was kind of a thing. Um, You know, as far as saying, Mabel getting a title shot in 95 was a coincidence. You know, it... It's yeah, Triple H did nothing. Edge it did nothing. Edge, I think Edge got an icy title shot at some point while King. Yeah, but no, but you're completely right though. There's yeah. never been a listed thing that this is what it's for because you're fighting. You're not fighting for it. Otherwise, it'd just be a, a, a tournament for a title shot. Yeah, right. Or it would be like an icy title tournament. This is the the, the winning prize is King of the Ring. It's just that that's it. Yeah, I mean Xavier <laughs> won it and got nothing done with it, and then Roman killed it. You know, Roman like literally like took his crown and like smashed it. Smash it. And I think Xavier got hurt shortly after. I think that's probably why they kind of. Yeah, made that's, that's what happens. Yeah. You know. So it wasn't not his fault, you know, because he wanted to win King of the Wing and actually make something of it. And I yeah. think he would have. Right. It would have been it would have been a chance for Wood to sh shine on his own. Absolutely. Like Kofi and Big E both did. Yeah. Yeah. And he got hurt. Yeah, that's a shame. What up, Jello G Pastel? I have no idea who you are unless unless I if it is who I think it is, which I don't think now. Um, I like I like Jello. Jello's, uh, Jello's yeah, pretty dope. Yeah, Jello is pretty dope. Um, I don't think it's the guys who I think it is. Uh, real quick, what what kind of Jello? What flavor of Jello? Ooh, that is a good question. We do need to know the flavor of Jello uh, to pass this test. But there were, we'll I'll talk about a little bit more when we get to that to that match. But in regards to uh, King and now Queen of the Ring, what do you think should be the stakes of winning this tournament to make it more valuable? Because I think this is a tournament. For the sake of having a tournament and there's no real stakes and wrestling is better when you have gimmicky stuff when there are things on the line so what stake would you do for this i have a couple of ideas my initial idea is you are deemed king and or queen of the ring you are guaranteed you are an automatic qualifier for the money in the bank ladder match that's that's not that's not a bad that's idea. my big idea yeah. Well, here's the thing, though. Here's the problem with that. 
how do you pick the rest of the combatants? Because like that doesn't mm. like that doesn't give you like it doesn't give you an advantage in that match. No, it right? doesn't. It's, it, that's kind of having it's kind of having the it there for the sake of having it there mm-hmm. because you got to fill what six spots for a money in the bank ladder match. Yeah. How those other five can get filled? They either get picked or they win one on one matches. Yeah. Why is it easier for them <laughs> to get the same match with no advantage compared to the king of the ring? Yeah. Right, like yeah, I get it. If like like it, it, so it's not a bad idea, but I I think the best thing to do is you keep the king and the, the crown, the king and queen stuff, right? You get the title, yeah, yeah. But it's it's more of a backstage thing. It's the beginning of your push, right? Okay. To make king and queen mean something, you got to do something afterwards, as in getting get more TV time, getting bigger feuds, mm-hmm. you're elevated up the card, right? It's not like more of a physical thing where it's like where Rumble gets a main event spot, yeah. It's more of like a symbolic thing behind the scenes. It's like, okay, we're now getting faith into you and giving you a more of a push. Or you can do the main event of SummerSlam. I've thought main event of SummerSlam would be yeah. kind of cool or like a call your shot. But going with the backstage politic thing, which I think I kind of enjoy, what if they actually – because remember when we did like King of a Night and Queen of a Night and whatnot and we used to do yeah. that stick thing? What if they kind of put that into a real thing where they kind of like – it's kind of like our mythical Charlotte Flair rule. Where they like get to like override something as king or as queen, I, the, I'm gonna do this for myself. They it would th- that would be a good idea as like a one off storyline, like a one year storyline. Yeah. If if they could act as a foil to the general manager. Yeah. Like they would need to be a good like if, if Chelsea Green won Queen of the Ring, <laughs> and she had that gimmick, and she could be a foil to Adam Pierce's decisions. <laughs> that that is a great idea. Chelsea Green as Queen of the Ring, which obviously didn't happen, she did not make it. Um, would be phenomenal. She would be stellar in that role. Yeah, or like <laughs> if the gimmick, if the gimmick is that she thinks she has power, but Adam Pierce is like Chelsea for the forty fifth time. <laughs> get the fuck out of my office, you bimbo butch moron. <laughs> like either way, it's good TV and it's gonna work. Good to be frets. Frets in our chat actually put up a good thing here. He said, "What about if the winner gets guaranteed number thirty in the Rumble?" It's too far out, though, right? It like, is. You would you would need to do that. You need more recency. Yeah, like it's it's too close to Survivor Series. Could get Survivor Series pay per view Rumble. Yeah. And does it make sense to do that December pay per view? I mean, maybe. Yeah. Not a, not a terrible idea. They're not really doing December pay per views anymore. Survivor Series is kind of a year ender. Yeah, and I think that makes sense because now it's like, all right, let's reset, have a few good TV matches, and then prepare for the Rumble for for Royal Rumble. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Fred's so Fred's I, is full of ideas right now. He said, but yeah. <laughs> immunity from being traded in the draft, which I mean, it, nah, it's, it's, no, nah. It's, what a title. Yeah, like, like an adult. <laughs> like I, I, I do, I do like the uh, guaranteed thirty in the Rumble main event of SummerSlam. I think is also a good one. Yeah. Because it, but it, it kind of elevates it as like, you know, you have your big four. Mm-hmm. Um, Money in the bank is five, and you can make. Um, yeah, because there's nothing that King really King like of the ring, King of the Ring has like a B tier. Yeah, it does. There's nothing that really like leaves. The like when you look at SummerSlam, SummerSlam, it, between them and Rumble is like the second biggest show of the year. SummerSlam is marketed as the biggest party of a summer. WrestleMania summer for the most part, um, but there is nothing unique that kind of leads in the SummerSlam. Like, you know, they're like SummerSlam is literally just, oh, it's a really big summer pay-per-view. You know, when you have yeah. you have the Rumble, you have the gimmick Rumble. Rumble kind of leads into Mania. Mania obviously speaks in of itself. Survivor Series essentially is pretty much war games, you know, on and off, depending on the year. Um, or it has been turned into war games. SummerSlam's kind of just there. <laughs> yeah. You know? So I, I always viewed it as it's the last it's the last thing you spend money on in the summer. Like it's the last big thing you do <laughs> yeah. in the summer before school starts or fall starts yeah. or whatever. That's a good idea. Someone's or class starts, right? Yeah. Jello G Bastel said override a title match if you win King or Queen of the Ring. That would be a wild, wild amount of power to wield. But I like the I, I like. Cody didn't finish the story. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the king. What do you want me to do? Yeah, I'm rewriting <laughs> history. What are you talking? Yeah, about? right. Um, the victor goes to spoils, and this guy won. Yeah. King of the Ring. So let's so let's go into uh, let's go into this uh, this King Queen of the Ring right now. With the speaking of Cody, with 
what has been told now, because there has been some confusion on my end, um, this is only for the WWE Championship. Undisputed WWE Universal Championship is the complete name. Uh, there was some kind of back and forth wherever Logan was going to put his U.S. title on the line, but that does not appear to be the case. So we are getting champion versus champion and only the WWE titles on the line. We're recording this on Tuesday before King Queen the Ring. A lot can change by Friday. Okay, which is also going to be in Jetta as well. So it's probably going to be pre-recorded and the news is going to leak anyways. Um, yeah. So as of right now, as is recording, Cody, Logan Paul, Logan Paul, the master of Saudi Arabia main events, by the way, going for the title. This is the second one because he went up against Roman for the title, uh, I think, last year or something like that. So Two years. Yeah. yeah two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah, he went up against Roman. Uh, so he, he, he is going to be the mensoor of Saudi Arabia. He's go, go, always going for a title and just always losing. That's going to be the flip of it. Uh, because Cody is only a month and some change into this title reign and Triple H named Cody on the Raptor Mania, the lead, the new face of the company, the person leading them into the, to the new era or whatever it's going to be called. Cody's winning this title fight. Point blank yeah, period. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's, here's the thing. Triple H is in a position where, there is nobody, and I mean nobody even close to remotely believable that's going to beat Cody outside of The Rock. And The Rock isn't here. So if you, if you, wh- why would you waste time building up someone just to tear them down? The Rock's getting jacked for an MMA movie. Have you seen him? Yeah, it's terrifying. It's disgusting. Right? So if you, but if you're going to throw Cody in a match you know he's going to win, you might as well make it, okay, that's actually interesting. I want to see that. Like, you know Logan's going to lose. You knew AJ was going to lose, but you still want to see the match because you want to see what happens. Yeah, no. And I don't, and I don't, I don't think it hurts Logan Paul to eat this L and keep his title. No, not at all. Like, there's, there's no – it has looked just like Black Panther 2, which is really funny. Um, there, there's, there's no reason – because, like, you know, you know what, who would you rather put in there? Because they're going to lose. No, Logan Paul – They here's the thing. Logan Paul – put a good story together. Whoever wrote for Logan's promo a couple of weeks ago, put a good story together. He was like, Hey, you came back at 38. I came back on 38. Me and you have had equal amounts of success. You know, I have an equal share to this new era as you do. Like that was the promo. And I was like, hey, he's got a little bit of a point. <laughs> like, they did kind of run. Yeah. yeah that, that prime sponsorship. Yeah. Sure. It, it works. Um, so it's, it's a good story to tell, um, but in the end, all be all, Logan Paul is not a full timer, per se. He's been doing a lot of full time stuff, which I commend him for. You know, being a being a champion. Uh, but we do. We, Cody's going to be there twenty four seven, day in and day out. Logan Paul's always going to leave for some reason. Um, like when he sees his brother get knocked knocked out when Jake Paul gets knocked out by Mike Tyson. Um, I don't know, man. Nah, I that's no happening. What's gonna happen there. Listen, I've seen Mike Tyson bite a guy's ear off. I mean, fair. <laughs> but yeah. He's also like sixty five. That strength doesn't go away, and that psy- psycho doesn't age. Psycho. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but age. body does. <laughs> doesn't matter. You can get that. You, he listen. All he needs is a good thirty seconds. I mean, here's the thing, though. Like, Mike Tyson would knock both of us out without thinking twice about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Like, we'd be on the floor, no question, no question about Even it. Even if he hit me bad, Jake, I'd sell and go to the floor. Yeah, but <laughs> Jake Jake Paul is legit. He's a legit boxer. Yeah, so Iron Mike's a I'm not, I'm not writing though. out Jake Paul in any way, shape, or form. I would not be surprised if Jake Paul put him on his ass. I don't think he knocks Tyson out, but we'll see. I don't think it's – he's going to knock him down and say knock him out. I mean, listen, I don't – do these kind of fights, it's a lot of – I just want to see what happens, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, like, my, like Mayweather Flo- Mayweather and McGregor, like that – yeah, they were actually trying to hurt each other, but yeah. it was a stunt for money. Like this is this is a stunt for money. Mm. So I don't, it's, it's almost – this is as close as going to get to a fixed fight. <laughs> We'll see. I don't know because I've Fix seen meaning like we agree not to actually hurt each other, kind of fix. I don't not like yeah. We decide a winner. Mm-hmm, kind yeah, of. and I, I bet you Mike Tyson agreed not to bite a Vander Holyfield, and that still happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. but that was in his prime in a heated title fight. Like that was, that was that was not winning for the money. That was I'm going to eat your children. <laughs> no, that wasn't that, that wasn't Holyfield. That was uh, he did. He said it to Lennox Lewis. 
That's even better. <laughs> I'm gonna eat your children. Oh God! I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat your testicles. I miss. I miss. I miss Tyson in his prime. Um, I wanted. To, I wanted. To, I always want to go to his one man show. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, Cody. Cody's beating Logan Paul. Big question here yes. is uh, our first bonus question of this. There's only a five match card so far, as per WWE. Uh, new new formula formula of doing things. AEW is about double that, by the way. Um, Fuck me. <laughs> Does Logan Paul pull out the brass knucks? As he is famous for. So pull, pulling them out mean using them or we see them? Uh, I have here use them. Here's the thing. He's going to use them. But he's not going to connect. All I need is a use. So a swing. Like a swing, yeah. Yes, he swings. Yeah, the, yeah we got to get a fair effort. So he, yeah, he uses yeah. them. Okay, I'm yeah. I'm I'm gonna agree with that as well. We got to get, but I, but I don't think he's gonna hit Cody with the brass knuckles. That yeah, yeah, I get that. And they say DQ. I thought it was gonna go to DQ when it, when they were when they were pitching title for title. I was like, yeah. oh, this is going to a DQ finish. It's like Cody's not no, but holding they, but they, two but belts. Problem with DQ. Yeah, one, Cody's not holding two belts, and two, problem with DQ is you need a rematch. So it's, it's just it just it just it just delays your bad booking decision. Yeah, no, no, and we're not doing Cody so and Logan Paul. There's and no dusty finish. It's a main event. It's yeah. a new era. One, two, three. Yeah, but yeah, the brass knuckles come into play. Yes, yes, we'll put it that way. Moving on uh, to the women's world championship, Becky Lynch. Versus the woman on a hell of a revenge tour. If you've seen all the clues she's been dropping, uh, Liv Morgan. And by the way, all of you thirsty men out there, Liv Morgan apparently is officially a real life single again. Her and Uncle Howdy, for, for who's going to be Uncle Howdy, Bo Dallas, apparently have broken up. So there's that thing. So she is. How do you know they were dating? It was it was known, but it wasn't really publicized. Uh, but yeah, that's apparently no more. So. Liv Morgan might be truly on a revenge tour right now, going up against Becky Lynch, who was only the champion because Liv broke Rhea's collarbone, I believe. And Rhea's out for a while because the, the true story was Becky was going to go on vacation with Seth from the industry for a considerable amount of time, as she has probably rightfully deserved her and Seth. And she is... She came back on a request to pretty much hold the division down since Rhea is in, injured. Um, so the big question is, do you, and I don't have a I don't have an answer to this myself on my own for my own predictions. I tried to do this beforehand. Do you for do you make Becky transitional? You know, and put this title on Liv and have Liv run rough shot as with the rough shot on as with this revenge tour, or does Becky stay around for a little bit longer uh, till Liv yeah. gets a little bit more like you know more momentum under her feet? Yeah, the answer is yes, but not now. Uh, Liv Liv wins Money in the Bank again. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, because they need. They need they because that's the best out for Becky, right? She could win and cash in on the same night again. Yeah, <laughs> right? you know what I mean, like she could win and cash because because WWE typically just writes off the women's mind in the bank pretty quickly. They always cash women's in first, and it's been done the first night multiple times. And they're undefeated. It's a hundred percent success. And it's hundred percent successful. Yeah, um, including Liv Morgan, she cashed in on Ronda Rousey, mm -hmm. um, which is a huge shock. I was like, no way. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think that's a good thing to do with Becky because otherwise you're gonna have a Money in the Bank briefcase with Becky as champion, Liv chasing, and who's the SmackDown's champion? Bailey. Bailey, yeah. Right, and you're not gonna cash in on Bailey for a while, and who's? So yeah, that's what that's what I would do. Delay, 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 and have Liv cash in after Becky loses to like. Who's on Raw? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to think of is on SmackDown. Eo Sky, that's Lyra Valkyria. Um, yeah, that like that. That's another thing. You can't. Becky needs to hold this division down because there's no one built up yet other than Liv Morgan. Yeah. So you got to give her time to stall with the championship while Triple H comes with some, comes up with some contenders. Yeah. Um, that that Liv can then work with. Mm hmm. You know, uh, Liv hasn't done. I said this a couple weeks ago. I think. Liv is best when she's psychotic and crazy, and she's very comfortable right now. She's doing better. Um, yeah, she does look comfortable. Yeah, she does look very comfortable. Yeah, she's comfortable right now, but, like, 
Do you remember when like Liv had an Extreme Rules match and she was like psychotic? Yeah. And I was like, wow, she did like this is her jam. We need we need the, her to be more psychotic. Like the the crazy hasn't come out yet. It's getting there. All of her all of her hints with Judgment Day, all of her messing around with Dom. Um, like she had Dom's bandana. I, I love the hints that she's fucking Dom. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. Like she she took a picture and she had Dom's bandana in her pocket. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dom. Dom did like the googly eyes on a on a on a Twitter account that said Liv Morgan's single now. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he like he like someone screenshotted like Liv Morgan's uh, Instagram post said liked by Dominic Mysterio or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. Yeah, and so that's the long story here. And so I I think I, I might have said it on Ringside Club when I was on their podcast. Uh, shout out to them, they're great guys. I need I need to get them on. Um, Liv winning the title is not the end goal of the Revenge Tour. Liv needs to systemically take everything that Rhea took from her. Dom is the golden goose in this whole thing. Yeah. You know, and you can, you can, you can slow burn that all summer. And I think that's what, that's what you have to do. You can't do like summer of punk, which is like two weeks. If we're going to do like a whole revenge, this has got to be a summer thing where Liv gets crazier and crazier and crazier. And I think the thing that's going to take her over the edge uh, in being crazy is her losing to Becky. Like she has to keep, like she has to keep cracking and cracking and cracking. Yeah. And I think uh, you you swayed me on that because I was like, ah, oh, they could give it to Liv, but then I was like, that's kind of like you you kill the story. Yeah. yeah, at that point, you should have given it to her in the first place. Yeah, like Becky is a transitional champion. It's just the transition needs time to take place. It's transition because, by necessity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like the, the rest of the Raw roster, women's roster, it needs to build up build up those baby faces. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of new faces. You, sh- you sh- Lyra, is Raquel Gonzalez there? Raquel wasn't even drafted. Um, oh, that sucks. yeah, no, she, uh, I know she has, I talked about this on, um, bots, bots and chair shots, uh, earlier on this year, she has this really funky medical condition where like when she gets her allergic reaction, she gets like all the allergic reactions, like or her face like breaks out horribly. I forgot what it's called, but I'll have to look it up and get back to you on that. Um, and talk about Raquel's like medical condition, but it's, 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 it's bad. Like, and she has really bad flare-ups, which kind of takes her away, because, like, Raquel would be perfect if she could, like... Yeah. She, She'd be a very good foil for Liv Morgan. Absolutely. With, yeah. You know, uh, but unfortunately, Raquel is not there right now, which which is a shame. But I think we're both going to go with Becky here on this one. Um, yeah. So here's my here's my next bonus question for this show. Um, speaking of Liv and Dom Dom, which is going... I think that's going to be the best story, especially when Liv comes... When uh, Rhea comes back. Like, imagine Dom and Liv getting into a full-fledged on, like, on-TV relationship. Live sex celebration. <laughs> and then Rhea shows up, like, the same night Rhea. Uh... <laughs> My big question is, does Dom Dom interfere on Liv's behalf this Saturday? No. So not Chad? No. No. Because you know why? They they haven't been seen together on tv officially like, in a sec like, like in a second yeah, yeah yeah, i get that like it hasn't been recognized by like the powers that be yet like whatever you want to say creative yeah okay all right I... jason jordan has not been made aware of this <laughs> <laughs> or jamie noble yeah or jamie noble <laughs> or hurricane, hurricane helms. Is, but no one believes him. <laughs> or hurricane <laughs> helms. dude what a creative force that probably is backstage like just all of those guys just bsing half the time I like it, dude. I think it's a good, it's a good team. A bunch of mid cars wish this doing what they wish they could have done in their careers. <laughs> yeah, it's freaking great. Add uh, add TJ to that as well. Yeah, it's like half of these half of these stories are just stories they wrote for themselves fifteen years ago that this Vince turned down. It's now there's place. Uh, I've characters. been waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> My moment is now. I mean, honestly, that's probably why, like, mid-card guys make such great agents. Because <laughs> they have to do everything. They've just been waiting for their time to shine. Yeah, pretty <laughs> they much. They get it in their career, so now they got it here. Pretty much. All right, so let's move on to this. Becky's going to retain for both of us. This is going to be the most interesting of all the matches so far. We have Intercontinental title, uh, triple threat match, Sami Zayn putting his title up against line against uh, my favorite thick boy in all of wrestling, Bronson Reed. That massive human being that he is. What is he doing here? He's just there to screw stuff up. And Chad Gable, who is literally becoming Kurt Angle number two. 
It's just me. It's okay. just call him Shorty G again. <laughs> no, no. Let's not go back to that. <laughs> let's shorten that up a bit. Yeah, no. So uh, I, what I was saying to that earlier was that there was somebody in the crowd on hard cam that somehow got through security Perk Gable as a sign. Jesus. <laughs> They got that through. They got it through. It only lasted like the first segment before security took it away. <laughs> Perk Gable. <laughs> yes. God, I love the internet. <laughs> so Perk Gable happened. The guys who did the song, because I tweeted about it uh, the other night, or last night, and the guys who, who, who made the <laughs> sign were like, yeah, it was us. They took it away after the first segment. <laughs> Whoops. They're like, oh, <laughs> like, we love seeing everything about it. <laughs> they're like, we just want to see how long we can keep it up, but it turns out not that long. <laughs> yeah. Fred said it. And I couldn't which, bring Jungle Boy Sucks into di- Yeah. In 2022? Like, he was. Why? Like, come on, AEW. Uh, so, the real story here in this Intercontinental title fight is Sammy versus Chad. And Sammy just happens to be everybody's favorite Captain Savaho. Uh, he's always trying to save people from like their narcissistic overlords he did it with jay he's trying to do it now with alpha academy um to the point where i believe chad and chad was seen talking with the creed brothers so team angle 2.0 is occurring at yeah, some point in time and i can't wait for it uh the big thing here you know uh oh okay i see where they're going you know here. chad looked chad looked strong taking out sammy Braun Street was kind of around uh on raw the other night in the Vince era of, of WWE and pro wrestling, usually my theory of opposite momentum would work. You know, Sammy looks weak. Sammy's going to win. You add the fact that there's a triple threat with Bronson Reed. You add the fact that Vince isn't around anymore. And oh, Triple H doesn't really play by the tech, by the traditional rules here. Do we think Sammy drops in Saudi Arabia? No, no, no. Um, because you got to introduce the Creed brothers eventually. Sure. So you introduce the you introduce the Creed brothers when Chad wins the belt, uh, so which means you got again delay, 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 stall, stall, stall. Um, which is why Bronson Reed is in this match. He is in there to eat a pin because Sammy is gonna like Chad's gonna get the look like he's gonna get the win on on Bronson, and Sammy is gonna pull him out and steal the win. And that's gonna then I think then again it leaves room for a Sammy Chad one on one match. Yeah, that works for me. <clears throat> works for me. Yeah, that's what I would do. That works for um, me. You also forget the fact that Sammy is also um, he is Syrian by by her, by heritage, I believe, and so I believe he is a practicing Muslim. Um, because he did, he is a practicing Muslim because he did go to Mecca the last time they were there. So I doubt <laughs> they would have Sammy lose in his. Essentially, his religious, religious home. Yeah. Although I thought, because I remember that he was there last time, and the crowd ate him up. But yeah. what was the reason he never went to the Saudi shows before? Wasn't he wasn't allowed to go? I don't know like what the technical government. Thing was. It was either government or religious based or something. I, which is which is pretty much one and the same over there. Yeah. In a lot of circumstances. I, I don't recall. I don't. I maybe maybe it was. It could have been government or religious based, or maybe it was his personal choice. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, the geopolitics in that region are very in- inconclusive. Yeah. So, <laughs> and very unclear. Yeah. So I don't. So yeah, it could I, have been I, Sammy's I remember, personal was, choice, and he finally was like, all right, I'll go, you know, at yeah. some point. So they loved the fuck out of him last him, time. He was there, uh, Mustafa so. Ali, obviously, as well. They both went to Mecca. Um, yeah. Because they did videotape their pilgrimages, which was kind of cool. Um, I'm surprised they're allowed to do that. <sighs> Yeah, that's very true. Uh, oh, Dory's reporting, but he chose not to go. So it was his personal choice not to show up for most times. All right. All right, hey. Fair enough. Oh, whatever. Fair enough. You know, um, but yeah, I think I think Sammy wins in a in a really weird way. Yeah. Like Sammy's Dusty around. finish. Potentially. Dusty finish. It's going to be fun. You know, Sammy is a good, Chad Gable's an athletic freak of nature. Sammy Zayn knows how to tell a great story. And Bron- Bronson Reed shouldn't be able to do top rope splashes on people. Yeah, it's scary. <laughs> like, it is, it is absolutely absurd what's going to happen, but Sammy somehow retains. It's going to be a lot. Big meaty boy. Oh, yeah, thick boy. I love Bronson Reed. 
He is good. Listen, he beat Okada. Okada put him over. He's worth something. I don't know about Okada these days, but he is worth he's worth something. <laughs> he's worth something. Uh, so Sammy retains, uh, and there's no bonus question for it. Oh, there's going to be a general bonus question at the end. Uh, but moving on to, we're going to do a two for one here at the uh, right now. The king and queen of the ring uh, matches right now. Number one, first and foremost, if you're looking at us, you're watching us live. I do love the crowns. The crowns are great. And I may or may not have checked to see how much a replica would go for, but they have not actually produced replicas at all. Oh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, like it's 300 bucks at least. Those It's the best looking King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring crowns that we've ever seen. You know what? Because there's not that stupid purple like Burger King helmet thing on it. <laughs> oh, like, like Macho King? <laughs> yeah, like the, the velvet, the, like the purple velvet thing yeah, or whatever. Yeah, it had the, it had the giant headpiece. Yeah. Yeah, or like the lame robe and the scepter. Yeah, yeah, that Corbin dragged yeah, out like for a while. Plastic. Yeah, no, these look legit on TV. I was like, wow, this is great. I would not look really good. I would not be surprised if these are on display at WWE World uh, next year in Vegas. They will be. You know, they will yeah, be. Yeah, no, these are fantastic. Um, so we've had a true tournament for King and Queen of the Ring. Um, I think sixteen total competitors. You know, we boiled it down. Raw had their finals or their semifinals uh, this past um, this past Monday. SmackDown is to be determined. So we're going to do a lot of predicting here uh, this time around. So we're going to start with the queens, queen of the ring here. Uh, Lyra Valkyria beat Io Sky in kind of a in kind of a fluke, uh, and so she will, wow, yeah, she it, it was a it was a decent match, but Lyra kind of snuck one in there. Beat Io Sky. I would argue Io doesn't need the queen of the ring. She's already been champion. Like she, there's that. Queen of the Ring would do nothing for her. Um, so she's going to she's going to go up against the she's winner. Like a gimmick, yeah, which she kind of needs. Well, she's outside of Bailey things. She's just you know we're just crazy and beating people up. It's fine. Uh, so Lyra's going to go up against the winner of SmackDown's uh, semifinal or SmackDown's final, Bianca Belair versus Nia Jack. Now a lot of people thought at some point we were going to get Jade versus Bianca in the semifinals on SmackDown, but that did not occur because Jade got herself disqualified in a great storyline fashion. They were in, did, did you watch, did you see yeah, this I liked clip? It. Yeah, I liked it. I, I watched SmackDown. Yeah, she got mad. She got mad that Nia screamed at her daughter and she went ballistic. It was great. It was great her storytelling. Daughter was, her, daughter was, her daughter was so adorable. And she's like, mommy, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm okay. And then Nia just railroads her. <laughs> she's like, close your eyes, baby. <laughs> Yeah, no, it it was good. It was good. Um, listen, you know, speaking of Jade, they, it was good to keep Jade back. She held her own in the tournament for as long as she could. She she looked great for the couple of matches that she had. I think Nia's the better choice, in my opinion. I agree. Jade, Jade's Jade's also still a little green. A little bit, but she's she's getting there. Yeah, and she's like fun. you you want you want that match with Bianca when Jade's like not as. 81 or 82 overall <laughs> that's a good good analogy you right, want her a mean, solid like, 90 yeah yeah like bianca's like bianca's a 93 yeah in jade's an 82 so yeah you gotta build her up wait till she's an 89 <laughs> yeah so i think <coughs> here is what i'm thinking i think we get lyra is clearly the becky lynch backed baby face bianca also doesn't need to win queen of the ring at all um, yeah, no, no, no. Dory, Dory, you are such a heel. Dory was at the SmackDown. She said she was in a, she said she was in a section full of, full of baby faces. And she was the only, yeah, she was Dory. the only heel. <laughs> you be that chompa loving. <laughs> yes. Be, be that person, Dory. Be that person, please. Uh, I am, I, for one think the king and queen of the ring are best suited on heels. So they do more with it. I'm going to go Naya beats Bianca in some weird fashion. It's not going to be a clean. And Naya annihilates Lyra Valkyria. Like, I think we get Queen Naya for a run because I think she will be an absolute menace on SmackDown with that crown. Yeah. I'm going. And then she joins. And then she finally joins. Yeah. (laughs) She joins. And she starts speaking in tongues like Tama Tonga. Yeah, that's weird. I don't like that. <laughs> it was a really weird. I was like, what is going on? Yeah, I was like, why is he staring into the camera speaking like Donnie from Wild Thornberries? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, for some reason, I probably think it was like a backstage. Thing, like, yo, you won't speak crazy on, on camera. <laughs> watch me. He's like, yeah, watch me. Watch, watch me. me. Watch me, cuz. Oos, watch this, oos. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. Because I was so confused. I was like, what is going on? Like, I don't understand what's happening right now. Um, besides the fact of like Solo Sokoa looking more and more like the weekend each and every week. Uh, but yeah, I think Naya wins the whole thing. We get he looks Queen good in red, Naya. Though. He looks good in red. He, he looks he good. Looks right. good. Yeah, the, hair, the haircut's kind of suspect because he's still hair. got the part in the bag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I think Naya wins the whole thing. I think we get Queen Naya on SmackDown and she just runs like a freaking psychotic maniac with that freaking crown. That's what that's my official choice. Well, who do you got? Yeah, I'm also picking Naya. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, like Lara Valkyria wins Queen of the Ring. Okay, cool. Then what? How <laughs> how how is she gonna use it? Like Naya is someone I think can embrace the gimmick. She'd get a reaction, and that she can actually more so than she already her. has. Yeah, yeah, right. Like people love to hate this bitch. Give give him a reason to hate her. Absolutely. I, and I was I was definitely a Naya hater, but since she's come back, I'm a I am I am all hailing Queen Naya along with Dory over there. Yeah, no, so. she's I yeah I'm I'm a fan of Naya. You know, and like she, she. I mean, we say it a lot, but she looks like she's having fun. She does. You know, she, yeah, yeah, she looks like she's having fun. We can say that for a lot of a WWE roster. Uh, moving on to the next one, King of the Ring. The 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 original the reason that we kind of have the show Kings of the Rings podcast or the the name we took. And there's an S, so it is not a copyright infringement. WWE, if you are listening, there's two um, S's. <laughs> there's two S's. Yes, that's right. There are two S's. Um, Gunther. One raw, he made he he choked out Jay. On, I'm surprised, on raw. honestly. It was a weird way to end it because they were clearly pressed for time. As soon as they called the match, it the, they cut the feed. <laughs> it went off air like it. Jay got knocked out at eleven by eleven oh one. The show was off Damn. air. Okay, yeah they they were they were pressed for time. But Gunther, in his entire run in King of the Ring has submitted or choked out every opponent. Kofi submits, Sheamus submitted, and he choked out Jay. Gunther's on a run <laughs> right now. He <laughs> is, wants to murder. <laughs> yeah. Gunther is on an absolute tear, so he's going to be representing Raw. He will go up against the winner of Tama Tonga or Randy Orton. Little quick thing on Randy Orton. That RKO he gave to Carmelo Hayes was beautiful. Yeah, I'm going to say the same thing I said a few <laughs> weeks ago. Carmelo looked very small standing next to Randy Orton. Randy's also 6'4". But I, 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 like, I know. I saw, I saw I, like, next to Randy, it was more, like, noticeable because Randy's a Goliath of a human being yeah. at, like, 40-plus for go, no go, reason. It was worse than Cody. Like, go back and watch that Cody match, just, just that opening shot. Like, Carmelo just looks – he's short. He's small. Well, so is Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryan. Yeah, I mean, he's super talented, so. big fan, but it's just – because like, he is he needs to look good standing next to main eventers like Cody and Randy and, like, someone like Asina or Roman. Mm-hmm. And but I I don't think his body is built for that. Yeah, I don't, I I don't know like, I don't know how he does that. But like, imagine him next to Drew McIntyre. Well, imagine anybody next to Drew McIntyre. See, we've seen Drew in person. Like, no one's going to look like him. Well, I know, I know. But but that that's why yeah. they're in the main event, right? The big meaty men still get over. It's still a big man. Well, that's game. a Vince thing. Yeah, for for at some point, yeah. But like, you have you had Shawn Michaels who's not even six feet. Bret Hart, I don't believe, is even six feet. True. So I think yeah, it's one of those things where like. It, aesthetically, yeah, it could work, but also like he's got his his character work is I think second to none. Like he believes that he's this like guy. He believes he's him, and I believe he's also him. I don't like the well. him to be honest. I love the him. I love the him. I, I, I got I, I get it, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's not doing it for me. It's an African American thing. I'll put it that way. All right, fair <laughs> enough. Fair <laughs> yeah, enough. um, it's uh. But like his character is going to shine. Like what you, what he can't make up in naturally in stature, he's going to make up in character. Agreed. And his character works, but yeah, and his character and, and his athletic line. she athletic ability. Yeah, his athletic ability is unbelievable. Yeah, you know, and we got to support him. We we sponsored his final match on the Indies before he went to NXT. So yeah, he he will always be that. So, uh, but be it as it may, Randy beat him in a beautiful RKO. Tom and Tonga, um, Tom and Tonga advanced. I don't know what they're going to do here because Rand is the established veteran. It would be easy. And 
ridiculously fun to see Randy versus Gunther. Yeah. However, you have Tom and Tonga. Your main story on SmackDown is this newly formed bloodline under Solo Sokoa. So you also got to make Tom and Tonga look good. So how do you do that going up against Randy? And like, and this is your SmackDown moment. Like, how do you do? It? Like, who? How do you KO, decide who goes off? KO screws him. KO I comes like with a stunner. Stunner into an RKO. And I think that's fine. Okay. I think that's fine. Um, so, yeah, he, he wins kind of weirdly. Yeah. Like, Randy Orton wins, but it's, like, unfair. Like, I, I don't I don't think Tama Tonga, like, it's fine. Because you yeah. don't want to have Tama Tonga go on to lose to Gunther. Because that doesn't do anything. If you're going to lose, might as well lose to a 15-time champion and a Hall of Famer. Yeah. All right? So, and and yeah. Gunther, you know, I, I, I thought Jay was going to, if it was Jay, and, if Jay had advanced, like, yeah, Tama Tonga's going to beat the fuck out of Randy Orton. And yeah. that's the match. But they went with Gunther, and I think they're going to go with Gunther to win the whole thing. You got Nia on SmackDown and Gunther on Raw. It just makes perfect sense. Yeah, I I don't think you, like, like the same thing we said with Liv, with Liv's storyline and her angle. You don't rush this. Yeah. You don't rush the exactly. bloodline storyline. And, and I think Gunther will also do well at the King gimmick. Cause oh, absolutely. The, the one thing he kind of misses is a character. Like, the, like when I think and of, purpose. Like, the ring general, that character is, like, in ring only yeah. his promos are fine but he lacks depth he lacks emotion and i think king of the ring can kind of give him a carny like character that he can excel in he does he's been doing better in his promos like he's he's very he, like I, he he his promo they did a tape promo he's very him. eloquent yes that's a good word yeah like he's, he's very he's eloquent very very well spoken he's poised yeah. he com- he's composed but is, Which brings to his character, like, it brings to the pompousness of his character. Oh, it, it fits. Yeah, it yeah. does. But it, it, it needs a little more flavor and seasoning. A little gusto. Yeah. Uh, his his video package promo on Raw this week was hysterical. You ever see Gunther in regular clothes? No. I bet it looks like ridiculous. <laughs> like, it was like, so like, like shirts and sweats. He was, he was, it was like he was doing a, 90, a 1990s infomercial interesting <laughs> it's in our tip of the crown somewhere in in the discord because so because he's he's in the empty arena he's walking down the stairs and oh, somebody I glanced, tweeted like I glance at this early I'm gonna go someone to said what is crown. Gunther? what is Gunther doing at aew because it's an empty oh arena. perk gable that's hilarious <laughs> oh there he is oh my god he looks like a school child yeah <laughs> and that's why spoken crack yeah he's literally doing a dare commercial <laughs> yeah that's regular clothes, Gunther. It's very weird. When I was fourteen, <laughs> I smoked cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck is he wearing? <laughs> Who dressed you, your mom? <laughs> Look at the shoes too. <laughs> you know, have been better if they were Heelys. Like we allow <laughs> Heelys. <laughs> Could you imagine? He's like doing the pro, but he's like he's like healing around the ring. <laughs> yeah, like, he's just wearing real Heelys. <laughs> What is Gunther doing in AEW? Oh. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, that's 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 accurate. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So honestly, so Loki, shout there. out to the tip of the crown aspect of our Discord. <laughs> it is the best part of our Discord because Mr. Fred <laughs> makes me laugh. Like Bill Zoidberg. <laughs> like, <laughs> I gotta give my man some love. Yeah, Fred's and Fred's and his uh his Simpson humor is is crazy. But back to the King of the Ring. So we both so I'm I'm flat out sold as soon as I saw what he did to Jay, who had another ridiculous entrance. They one shot at Jay's entrance again from the back. Nice. It was it was absolutely amazing. Um and they did a floor shot. So like you follow him to the ring and like the camera was angled to the floor. So when it shot up, you saw all like the firefly lights waving up and down with him. That's cool. It is. Yeah, it's a crazy shot. But after seeing what Gunther did to Jay, which is a fantastic match, what Gunther did to Jay, there is no way that Randy or Tamatanga beat Gunther. Gunther is going, Gunther's on a war path, and this is going to be, if he does something with this King of the Ring, this is going to be historic, and I think he's going to do something with it because you have the potential as Gunther, as King of the Ring, going into Germany at Bash of Berlin. The writing's on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Can you imagine Gunther as a conquering King of the Ring champion and his whole first gimmick under Imperium was this Mattis Sacred going into Germany? 
with a crown? Like, it's very scary. Okay. Oh my <laughs> yeah. god. So I had to I had to Google it. Um so they what? don't they don't call them like kings or queens in Germany. They call them chancellors. So if he That makes sense. If he, re, if he rebrands himself to Chancellor of the Ring, Chancellor <laughs> Gunther. <laughs> yes. Yes, I want all of this. The Bundeskanzler. <laughs> I can't say this word. B U N D E S K A N Z L E R. In German politics, speak. the Bundeskanzler. So it's like Chancellor, though. Yeah. Is equivalent to the Prime okay. Minister and is elected by the Bundestag. Bundestag. Nice. I mean, technically, Gunther is Austrian, but yeah, we'll just, you know, he's going, he's going into Germany as a big deal. Let's put it that way. Uh, so that, that's they they do use cha- oh it's Chancellor of Austria too. Oh okay that works out then. That works out then perfectly. So yeah, King and Queen of the Ring are going to go to heels because they do the best work with it. It is a heelish more gimmick, and I think Nia's going to do well. I think Gunther's going to do well, and they're going to have a really fun time. So that is the King and Queen of the Ring premium live event uh, for Jeddah Saudi Arabia. Remember happening Saturday. Uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Uh, if you're on the West Coast in America or North America for that chance. Uh, so, dude, Austria's, we... Austria's chancellor is named Carl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was with a K. Okay. Carl. Uh, I know a Carl with a K. N e h a m m m e r. Kneehammer. So before we get to or before we get to our crown ratings of King and King and Queen of the Ring, uh, big question here is uh, our last bonus question. We've been seeing a lot of weird QR codes, a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, no, they don't show up. Potentially, why it's like does Uncle does Uncle Howdy show up? No, no. Uncle Where Howdy. Where would he show up? Like I didn't. I honestly, if they were if they were gonna do title for title, a good out would have been Uncle Howdy. That would have made Fair. sense to me. But since it's not title for title, because like okay, if you're gonna bring in Wyatt Six or Uncle Howdy or whoever you want to bring in next, where do you put them? And mm. and why? Like, because Corey Graves and Wade Barrett mentioned like the, the the glitches and the QR codes on SmackDown, which was also a little weird. Um, they did the they they hacked the Twitch stream too. Yeah, which I thought was pretty funny. So they're yeah hacked the Twitch stream. So it's um it's still building, it's still building and elevating. Give it give it a few months, probably SummerSlam. So the answer is no. Yeah, fair, very very fair with that. Um, so moving on, moving on to that. So how well do you think this premium live event will go between crowns? Obviously one crown being the worst, ten crown being the greatest thing of all time or WrestleMania 40. Um, so where, where does this lie? Will? um, I'll give it a seven and a half. You know, I, I don't like that. Me and you are also like making like the same predictions for these cards again. It makes hey, okay, well, well, we'll see what happens when we get yeah, to AEW. Yeah, AEW's me a wild card, but like it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little, you know. The score more card hasn't moved that much. So a, WWE is predictable right now. It that mm-hmm. that post mania lull is a real thing right now. Um, but the matches are still entertaining. The character development is there, and we just gotta wait until a few months or so. So seven and money a half. in the bank. Think money in the bank's gonna kick things. Yeah. Up. So seven and a half. It's, it'll be a good wrestling show. The wrestling's never bad. Raw and SmackDown have been very wrestling heavy because of the tournament. So, which I love, I love that reestablishment after. Which to me is kind of like, yeah, everyone can wrestle. I get it. I like the promos and the story and development, but seven and a half, par for yeah, course. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with eight. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just go with eight. I think solid here. It's gonna be, it's only close to a backlash level without the crowd, without the crazy crowd. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens. Moving on. Moving on to the second half of the show, or more what we call what we might call the speed round. AEW AEW's double or nothing. D and W are weird. Or AEW's AEW double or, or nothing. Yeah, <laughs> AEW or nothing. Coming live from the NGM Grand uh, Arena and then an in echo Las Vegas. The crowd's empty. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they should be able to solve the MGM Grand Arena. Uh, Sunday, May twenty six, eight p.m. Uh, live on pay-per-view uh it is a massive card and real quick you'll love this well there are nine matches on this card eight of those matches hold on hold on no that's not it eight of those matches are for a championship or seven of the seven of the nine are for a championship 
That's to be expected. That's to be expected. (laughs) Because there's so many goddamn titles. Um, This is a very interesting thing that I want to point out, too, as well. As I was researching Double or Nothing, uh, they have this little perk. They have, like, this VIP package you can do for for AW Double or Nothing. I was researching it where you get... You get you get an hour early entrance into the arena, get some exclusive merchandise, get a picture with, I believe, the AEW title, and I think an AEW superstar as well, which I thought was an interesting little perk. That's pretty like, cool. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. I would, yeah. I would do that. <laughs> you, get, you get an hour of, like, line-free shopping because there's nobody in the arena. Food lines? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you get a picture. You get a picture with the AEW championship, and I think uh, some exclusive merch, and I think a potential AEW superstar. Like, it's a really good idea. It's, it's worth the extra hour. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would <laughs> actually, know? yeah, I would definitely spend money on that. Yeah. You know, even if it I'm would, not a fan, like if I was going to the show, it was an extra. Like, I, well, how much is that? Much extra is it? Is it say? I don't know. I'd have to look it up again. Like, if, I saw even it, if it was like a hundred bucks, I'd probably like. Yeah, I would do that. If it was, if it was you, under like seventy five, hundred dollars, I'd probably do that. Because you know what, you get you get all the stuff that you would want to do without the line. Yeah. And then you get to chill out the rest of the time. Yeah. If I'm just waiting around <laughs> for people to enter the building, yeah, I'm going to go buy food and buy a T-shirt just to kill time. Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. Good on AEW. So, good business, TK. Yeah. I like that. I like that idea. I wonder if WWE will adapt it, but maybe not because they have on location. But moving yeah, on. It would, it would sell out too fast. <laughs> yeah, that's also true. Uh, it's a horrible problem to have. You just would, open, you would, you would just open doors an hour earlier. <laughs> <laughs> It's very true. <laughs> so we've got to break down what I guess is turning out to be AEW's marquee match for this uh, for this pay per view of theirs. You have the Anarchy in the Arena match, not to be confused with Stadium Stampede, which was also a match years ago. At this point, I like Stadium uh, Stampede. That was pretty dope. It was fun. It was it was cre it was creative. In a time where they needed to be creative. Yes. Uh, doesn't work, doesn't work now, but it was good for yeah. it was it was exactly what we needed when we needed it at the time. Yeah. yeah. Anarchy in the arena was done last year, I believe, between the Bucks and FTR, and it was kind of a weird thing where they played a lot of music. Do you remember they played a lot of music during the match? There was a rock band going on. They were fighting around. I, in the I arena. remember that. I forgot about <laughs> yeah, that. I was like, "What is going on?" I was like, "Stop playing the music." I want to follow up. I want to hear what's going on. Uh, So Anarchy Arena again, and here's the story that we have. We have this newly reformed version of the Elite where the Young Bucks are pretty much playing themselves, tyrannical owners. Uh, They've added Okada. They added a returning Jack Perry. This is very, in my opinion, the NWO once again. Does that make Jack Perry six? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Because um, when you think about it, they started going after the announced team. Their first thing was they took out the owner, Tony Khan, with the pile driver on TV. So bad that Tony Khan made some wild comments during the NFL draft. So I guess the gimmick worked. Um, and they are running roughshod with all the power on, on AEW as of this new form. The elite with the backing of the Bucks, you are l- real-time uh evps so much power and will i'm 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 sorry i'm gonna break your heart here they fired christopher daniels like oh no <laughs> they fired they fired christopher daniels on tv i think he was leaving anyway. he's been but- dying <laughs> to go back to tna he's like oh my god the old branding this is my calling get me back you mean because they're gonna be tag champs in three weeks <laughs> so you have that team, pretty much their their version of an NWO like stable. No, and it's not. Have... All right, I, this is ridiculous. All right, all right, go, all right come on. All right, so, then sway me. Yeah. I, I, I talked about this a few weeks ago. They already have the power. <laughs> like they're already EVPs. Okay. Like who are you taking power from? Your partner? That's not. That's just stupid. Like the, the NWO was outside people coming in. Like th- if this was an equivalent in WCW, this would be like JJ Dillon pile driving Eric Bischoff. Well, you had Okada who's coming from outside, and Jack Perry was formally, essentially kicked out of AEW. DFA, I past. guess. So, it, yeah. but they're not taking power. They're just, there's like, a, I guess them two are coming into power. But the Bucks were already, and they're leaders. They already had the power. Mm-hmm. They're not taking power from anybody. They could have been doing that the whole time, taking the announcers. They they didn't gain this new power. Not the Undertaker could do lightning now. <laughs> like, they didn't coup Tony Khan. They kind of cooed Tony like, Khan. NWO was a, NWO was a coup. 
Well, Ku comes from inside. Or, no, a whole hostile takeover. Okay, yeah, so. hostile takeover. Uh, so, I mean, they kind of cooed Tony, or more mutiny on Tony. Yeah, I would like, say it would have made more sense. It's like, you know what? We've been holding back. If the story was, we've been holding back our muscle. Now it's time to flex it. We're going to use our full yeah. power here. Right? So. It is more mutiny. But then, so you have Team Elite versus Team AEW as we move on here. And AEW consists of FTR, Brian Danielson, who's, and... Darby Allen, who was replacing Eddie Kingston because Eddie Kingston broke his leg when the Bucks attacked him at NJPW Strong in uh, over the weekend. So Eddie Kingston has broken his leg. He is out until 2025, and Darby Allen is his replacement for showing up after Dynasty. Um, this is going to be a wild and crazy match. I can see this is probably going to main event because uh, the Bucks. Eddie Kingston um, comes back by Survivor Series. <laughs> and sides with WWE. <laughs> That's all I was while you were talking. Uh, yeah, this is probably going to be an event. It's the it's the gimmick yeah. of all gimmick matches, and I think this is a, a yeah. it's the main event. I'll say that. Yeah. So, are you Team Elite or Team AEW? Yeah, I'll do Team Elite for the, for the, for the sake of things. I mean, it's if you're going to drag this. You know, this is kind of a theme. If you're going to drag this into the summer, because this is the this is a summer kickoff style uh, weekend for everybody. If you're going to drag this, you go with the elite. Um, but I have a feeling they're going to do team, team AEW here. I, I keep on thinking now. Now that I'm looking at this poster again, do you remember when WWE fired Daniel Bryan? Yeah. And then they brought him back in that weird like WWE. Versus, oh, the, the, like, the Nexus angle. Yeah, WWE. Yeah. Versus, yeah. I. Yeah. I I see Daniel Bryan's face, and I hear, like, our final member is Daniel Bryan. And he walks. <laughs> that's, that's all I can picture right now. Everyone's like, who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for the sake of argument's sake, I'm going to go Team AEW on this one. Um, even though it's going to be rough because Darby Allen has a death sentence. Brian Danielson's on his last leg. And FTR is just going to beat people up for no apparent reason. Dar- Darby's theme song came on on my Spotify shuffle the other day, and I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, it made me want to watch AEW <laughs> again. But I was like, oh, yeah, but it's the Young Bucks. <laughs> but at least Dar- is Dar- is Darby, or as long as if Darby still has his song, I might I might tune in. Yeah, I don't know who has a worse mustache, uh, the, the, the Bucks or Dom Mysterio. Dude, don't be disrespecting Dom Mysterio's mustache like that. <laughs> I said I don't know who has a and uh, Young Buck number two, the one in the back. Uh, I think that's Matt. Sure, he yeah. he's he's got the better he's got the better facial hair. He looks great. These are older photos. These aren't what they look like now. I know. But, <laughs> yeah, that's a great photo. Great, my, great facial hair. He kind of looks like a, he kind of looks like a smaller Drew McIntyre. Dude, my mustache. If Fred's, Fred's, Fred's mustache looks bad, my mustache would look way worse. I try. I did a. I did a pandemic mustache because no one could see it, and, uh, and then you saw it. And then I. I had to see it. Me and Nash look at it every day. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. Uh, so there's that. So moving on to the AEW World Championship match, uh, Swerve Strickland in a pretty good title defense against everybody's favorite daddy, leader of the patriarchy, known as Christian Cage. Christian Cage obviously dropped his TNT title to his friend or enemy, Adam Copeland, formerly known as Edge. And he's going up against Swerve, playing all of the hits like you are a bad father. Ooh, black guy being an absent father. Who would have known they were going to go with that angle? Uh And also seeing that uh, Christian Cage has a thing of people being bad fathers, which is kind of his whole kid and Capullo and stick. Uh, Swerve strictly ever since coming to the top has realized that a lot of people who he thought were friends are pretty much now his enemies. He had to take out uh, this group that he used to be that used to help out called the mogul dynasty uh so now he's pretty much on his own and christian cage has the full uh power of the patriarchy uh behind him including nick wayne and i believe nick wayne's mom as well as well as other people so does swerve drop this title to christian who is one of the most ridiculous outlanders and actually pretty good heel in aew i don't i don't like the patriarchy i don't like that the name is the name of a faction if it's an actual faction <laughs> that's that is the name of the faction. it, may, the it makes me very uncomfortable <laughs> i don't get uncomfortable <laughs> like, i am very comfortable in most situations mm-hmm. but yeah this the patriarchy Ooh, okay. <laughs> weird it's very weird of you christian 
<laughs> Very weird yeah. of you. So yeah, Swerve is gonna Swerve is gonna make Christian go buy a carton of milk, and he's never gonna come back. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how long. I don't know how much longer Christian has with this, but listen, I, I'm all I'm all on the Swerve train. Um, he's got to have a long title run at this point, so I'm gonna go with Swerve as well as this. This is. Going to be an interesting thing to see what they do. And also where it places, obviously, Anarchy in the arena is going to probably main event. That is your main storyline. Moving on to a number which is seemingly on the continuous train of a Tony Storm timeless championship run. She's going up against Serena Deeb. We all used to know her as part of the Straight Edge Society when she didn't have hair. Um, but she, she's facing Tony Storm. I think for me, this is pretty... This is pretty easy you haven't built up anybody in your women's division that can take out Tony on from a character perspective. Yeah. That that's all it is for me. This is just a placeholder match for Tony Storm to kind of do something. You know, she took out Deanna Perrazzo. Uh Britt Baker's not back yet. That's the only character built big enough right now for potentially take out Tony. Um Tony's gonna hold this for a long freaking time. Dude, why is that big guy in the back look like Gorilla Monsoon? He he's he does. I mean, I see what she's. I see what like, you, he looks what like looking a gorilla, at. gorilla monsoon, brother love, like Paul <laughs> Bear and Mister Fretz, all as one person. <laughs> that is a hell of a of a hodgepodge. I would throw. I'll throw in Joseph Parks too. The uh, you're doing uh, Abyss's brother. <laughs> yeah, you're. Don't talk about Luther like that. Um. <laughs> Yeah, no, Luther Lu VA, but I, I think it's I think it's time with Tony Storm. The yeah, funny thing about Tony, Tony Storm keeks onto this. Yeah, yeah. Look at her. The funny thing about this, she's great. Yeah, she's she's amazing. It's like if Angelica um, was a wrestler. <laughs> wow, wow, good reference. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very good reference. If Angelica was a wrestler. If Angelica was a wrestler. Sit me out, sit me out. <laughs> oh, and the guy in the back's Jonathan. I knew it. <laughs> No, uh, so Tony, they, there was a there was a wedding. I think Ruby Soho got married over the weekend. So there was a bunch of wrestlers there. So Tony Storm had a picture of a bunch of the female wrestlers, and she edited the photo to have her in black and white. Amazing. <laughs> Live the gimmick, girl. Live the gimmick. Yeah. Live the gimmick. Tony Storm retains. And now to the obvious Ricky answer for this, but the TBS championship, Mercedes Monet finally is going to wrestle in AEW after debuting. She hasn't wrestled yet? Ago. Not at all. What the all. fuck do you mean she hasn't wrestled yet? Why? <laughs> she hasn't wrestled yet. What's she waiting for? She's not injured. She was, uh, but that was a while ago. She had screwed up her ankle, ironically, to Willow Nightingale at a New Japan events. <laughs> that was a long-ass time ago, though, no? Exactly. She dropped to she dropped to Willow. She was injured. She was on the shelf for a while. She signed to AEW, and she is just now. But she signed. Going, she signed in March. Yeah, and she is just now having her match, her first ever match for the TBS Championship against Willow Nightingale. The story kind of writes itself. Willow was the reason that she got injured in her last match in New Japan. Now she's going for Willow's title. Uh, she's fine. Willow powerbombed her through a table at the contract signing on Dynamite this past week. Uh, for me, this is pretty easy. You do not sign someone in the women's division, in, a, in professional wrestling's women's division, that is world-renowned, that it was a big signing, you know, and you don't have her lose her first match on a big event. Mercedes WWE wins. <laughs> Fair. Fair. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right, though. I don't know. I heard, I've heard. i heard your girl has been getting dunked on on the internet for not being able to cut a promo. I haven't watched it, too. I think it's because they've kind of been, like, from what I've heard and from what I've Their seen. Their 2016 uh, promos is what is the critique I've been hearing. Uh, from what I've seen is or heard, it's like they kind of Lacey Evans her. I'm like, going to get you at the pay-per-view. Like, you know, she would just come out and be like, hey, I'm almost ready to go, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, you know, then she, like, disappears. You know, she has been doing some backstage stuff. She has been getting, getting attacked backstage. I am the C -E -O of A. -E you know what it is? You know what it is for me? I, I, never for liked, I never liked Sasha Banks promos for the most part. I, I, you, we've talked about that before. Yeah. But what gets me with this, with the Mercedes Monet things, like, I don't like her, I don't like the Mercedes theme song. 
Is it the same one she had in New Japan or is it different? Where it says like CEO, CEO. Was like 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 a, like a college chant, like a football, like a college kind basketball of. chant. Yeah, it's kind of like Flight of the Valkyries. Like she's like, like G double O D E Y E, good eye, good eye. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that long, but yeah. <laughs> we want a pinfall, just a little pinfall. P I N F A L. We can't spell pinfall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's like I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't grab me. Right now, I think that's what's killing me with the like the theme song is kind of like not grabbing me. But be it as it may, you don't make a big huff about Mercedes yeah. Monet. You don't do what was it called? Um, big business, pretty much a dynamite special to announce her debut and then have her lose. Mercedes is beating Willow for this title. I think it's weird she's going from a mid card, but we'll see what happens. With this, but I think Mercedes wins flat out. Are you going with Mercedes? Or are you going with Willow? And yeah, I'll, I'll go. Yourself? Yeah, you, you you can't go against Mercedes. You spend all the money on her. You gotta get the most out of it, right? The star player plays every day. Exactly. And your yeah. rookies, rookies play every day too. <laughs> that that is also true. That's also true. Moving along down this card, another championship match, folks. Who would have known the TNT title? I cannot wait. Till they change the names of these titles. Oh, I really can't. Do you know the TNT Championship has been defended over a hundred times already? A hundred times? Yeah, it was a stat uh, this past week on That's not a good one. (laughs) Or maybe it is. Maybe it is. Depending on depending on how many champions there's been, but the TNT title has been defended over a hundred times since its inception. Uh, But. Adam Copeland, formerly known as Edge, going up going up against Malachi Black, formerly known as <laughs> Alistair Black. Um, they're doing I'll, a TNT I'll, I'll like championship. That picture of Malachi. Like, it's going to be like Darth Vader without the helmet vibes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. They're, Edge is defending the title in a barbed wire steel cage match. Why? Because uh, Malachi Black is in a sadistic phase. Edge is being... Every other member of Malachi Black's faction, um, Malachi Black wants to pretty much take everything from Edge. He actually stole Edge's wedding ring this past week. Um, oh, I guess I can't walk Dynamite. through the door now as a dumbass finish. <laughs> so that's a plus. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know what Edge is, or I keep on calling this, I don't know what Adam Copeland or Edge is going to do it's Edge. with this. Yeah, it's kind of Edge. Adam Copeland sounds so weird. Um, this is a toss-up for me. Because I can see Edge being at the end of his career. He actually had a good match against Kyle O'Reilly. Surprise, surprise. Um, oh, cool Kyle's the, back? <laughs> well, not cool Kyle, but he's still Kyle. Um, but yeah, they were also in like they're in Canada when they're doing They're both Canadian, so it worked out. Um, that helps. Yeah, it, do, it does help a lot. Uh, so I don't know if Edge is in the part of his career where he just wants to give and give and give. Because I can see him giving to Alistair and have, having the TNT title or Edge actually winning this. This is going to be bloody. This is going to be a weird match. I'm kind. Of, I'm going to make you make the first pick, Will, because I don't know how, how they're going to go with this one. Yeah, this is Edge saying, "Hey, I'm sorry I didn't get to do Judgment Day with you. Um, now, <laughs> thanks for eating this pinfall." Edge wins. Ooh. Ooh. But yeah, okay. a lot of blood. Tons of blood. Tons of blood for this one. Uh, I'm gonna go the opposite. I'm gonna go Malachi Black. And just, let's let's get a little kooky with this one. Ooh, yeah, let's get a little little, little kooky with get this. Get real freaky naughty. <laughs> Where's that from? Um, I forgot. Dodgeball. Yes, yes, you are. You're right. That was uh, that was white. Yeah, that was White Goodman. That was White like, Goodman. Freaky, are you freaky reading? Naughty. Are you reading the dictionary? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh my God! What a movie! I told what you a she's movie. a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to oh my fault. There's six that are title matches. My apologies because this isn't actually a title match. John Moxley, the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. You know the thing that's supposed to be going on in New Japan. Um, is not putting his title on line. He's going up against Kanosuke Takeshka, uh, who is a fantastic performer. Um, in the ring. Um, part of a Don Callis family in an IWGP, wait for me, IWGP World Heavyweight Championship Eliminator match. What does that mean? Okay, it's a simple concept. WWE has done it before and they haven't called it something this freaking long. This is essentially, this is essentially championship contender match against the champion. Eliminator match. So pretty much if 
if Takeshka beats John Moxley in a non-title fight, he gets a chance to challenge John Moxley for the title. Oh, that's fine, but eliminator <laughs> is the wrong word. But if he but if he loses, like then he yeah. You are correct. I I don't get it either. Right? This is like what they call eliminator it. just does the word eliminator does just not fit here. Yeah. Like, 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 are they trying to think of another word for contender? I guess. Like number one contenders match. I guess. But that's what they're calling it. Yeah, because like no, not not a bad, not a bad, not bad booking. It's just bad wording. Yeah, Semantics. It's, it's long. It's long. It just. It's also weird because like this is the. Heavy, like this isn't the Ring of Honor Championship on an AEW program, right? Because like AEW owns Ring of Honor, they're they're in a partnership with New Japan right now, and John Moxley is their heavyweight champion, and they're like, like it's 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 very weird to me to have another major company's biggest title on your show, essentially in the mid card. I don't know. I think it, it's not bad for it's not bad for. Uh... New Japan, though, because it introduces them further to an American audience. True. Right? And Um, I don't know. It's you got to do something with the partnership. That's true. That's very true. I'm waiting for the AEW belt. And Noxley is an AEW guy. Yeah. It's a little weirder to have an AEW guy as your world champion. It's mm-hmm. a little on but the Mox is equal part. Mox is equal part a uh, New Japan guy, too. He's done a lot of stuff. Yeah, I know he can go back and forth and have this relationship, but. Yeah. I don't know. This one doesn't bother me. It's just the word eliminator I don't like. Yeah. So does does Takeshka beat Moxley and get a title fight, or does Mox win this? Um. Is there an AEW? Not AEW. Is there? Uh, is Forbidden Door coming up? Forbidden Door is going to be in uh, June, next right? month. Yeah, it's in June. Yeah, he wins. It's at UBS Arena. It's on. It's on the same it? Ta- weekend as Taka- Pride Weekend. Takashita, Takashita. Takeshka. 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 Yeah, yeah, he wins. Takeshita, yeah. He wins. A roll up. See, nice roll up. <laughs> nice roll up. Uh, I'm going to go, since Forbidden Door, Forbidden Door has to be their kind of like their crazy thing. Someone has to face Moxie. And the catch has already been too exposed to be like, oh, you know, someone's coming from New Japan. Uh, I think Moxie beats him. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go with Moxie on this one. I think you get a bigger person for Moxley um, for Forbidden Door, which is next month. That, that's what I think is going to happen. Uh, moving along uh, to, I guess, that yes, folks, another championship match, the AEW International Championship, not to be mixed up with the Continental Championship, which is held by Okada currently. Okay. The International Championship, Roderick Strong, Lisp and all, versus <laughs> Will Ospreay. I haven't noticed his lisp, to be honest. I, I don't know. It always stuck out to me in NXT. But but I always noticed him. I was like, oh, that's the reason he doesn't speak. And Adam Cole is the one who speaks for all of them. Um, so tell me what you've heard this before. Roderick Strong has a faction that is known as Undisputed. Just Undisputed? Just Undisputed. That's I guess that's Eakin copyright. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so he has the international championship. He's going up against Will Ospreay. My, my same logic applies here as it applied to Mercedes Monet versus Willing Nightingale. You don't make a big stink about these signings and have them lose on a on a title. Osprey's getting this title. Like you like you had Osprey one month, you had Mercedes Monet the next month. They're both winning championships. Yeah, I agree. You know, there, there's no way. Like, yeah, it's hard to argue against I, that. And he <laughs> yeah. is he is that damn good at winning a title he is. no one remembers. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you're going to usher in all these new people, you got to have them as main staples. I mean, it's AEW's new era, the the Young Bucks era <laughs> again. I don't, I don't know, I don't know. But like, you you can't make a big huff and puff about all of these signings and not put titles and not start to to put them in some position to to do something. Yeah, dude. Imagine uh, imagine having them. seven options for titles and you don't have one of them. One of them. <laughs> like you don't yeah. even get to one of them. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So yeah, it's it's definitely Osprey uh, for this one for me because Roddy's holding it still. Osprey's ready. Osprey's been ready, uh, especially with his match at Dynasty. Moving on. So we don't have an official picture for this, but this is the last of the title fights. Yay! <laughs> you remember the FTW Championship? Oh yeah. 
yeah, it's owned by Jericho now, who's under his whole gimmick of he's the learning tree. Um, so... I know the internet hates Chris Jericho now. What did Chris Jericho do? <laughs> No, he's just old and kind of he's just past his prime at this point. Well, he's fifty. Currently. He's like fifty four. What the fuck you expect? No, but like he's still highlighted on TV enough, and we're, people are just like, we're over this. Oh, like give up, give up your spot. Yeah, kind of, kind of thing. You just um, deserves it, man. <laughs> so, and he's calling himself a learning tree, but like it's not about like him. Get, it's just like he's performing poorly. That that's the thing. I think that's what it is. I am the learning tree. That is his whole thing now. He's, 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 his whole gimmick is I am the learning tree. Um, so he's going to face the winner of a triple threat match between Shibata, Hook, and Brian Keefe, the weird looking guy with the hat who calls himself the bounty hunter. I'm going to go give, with. Give it a hook. I'm giving it the hook too. Lion <laughs> yeah. and sinker. Baby. Sinker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going with Hook. Who's that Brucey looking motherfucker on the left? Uh, that's Shibata. Shibata. He's a pretty yeah. yeah and pretty, I know, and I know, pretty I know his name. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I kind of like Django. Ke- Django on the right is pretty. Looks pretty dope too. Brian Keith, Bounty Hunter Brian Keith. Uh, uh, see Bounty Hunter. I was right. <laughs> yeah, Bounty Hunter Brian. Brian Keith. Keith is it with an R or a Y? That is or an, I or a Y. That's an R. That's an R. B R Y or I. B R Y A N. Yes. yes, perfect. Way better. <laughs> I, I actually I hope it was Keith with the Y too. No, it K-E-Y-T-H, is not. Keith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is weird. That is weird. <laughs> Brian Keith. That would be my wrestling that, name with two Y's. Phonetic. Phonetic. But, but not. No, Byron but. Keith. <laughs> Byron Keith. <laughs> B-Y-R-O-N. K-Y-E-Y-T-H. Byron Keith. Keith. Should make that in 2K24. Dude, Dinga Durgan is forever winning. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the best thing I've ever stolen. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with Hook as well for this one. So yeah, Hook Hook wins a Hook wins a three way. Hook beats Jericho. Hook with the FTW championship because yay, never champion. So this one, this one is not. This is a storyline thing. You have the the breakup of the best friends that has already happened. Trent Beretta has turned his back on the best friends a couple months ago, uh, and Orange Cassidy, you know, who man of men of little words, uh, has taken. Has taken opposition to this. So we have Trent Beretta versus Orange Cassidy. Uh, you know, the best friends fighting. Who takes this? At this point, I I hate to say it, but I feel like Orange Cassidy is a one trick pony. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I don't like that I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. But I was thinking that the other day too. I'm like, yeah, he's he got old, I guess. I don't know. Does the crowd still love him? I couldn't tell you. I, I couldn't tell you either. But for me, uh, I, kind of, I kind of forgot he was on the on the roster. I I have that problem with AEW all the time. Like, wow, you guys are still there. Like I like in researching, uh, in researching Jericho's thing, um, I rem I remembered that Big Bill was there. Big Bill, Big Cass, yeah. I go, yeah, Big Sammy Bill is there. Sammy Guevara there. That's right. Adam Cole's there. Adam, MJF. Uh, kind of uh, there. Phoenix and what's his name? His brother are there. Who? Ray Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Um, Pentagon. Pentagon. Pentagon, yeah. Pentagon, yeah. I think Orange Cassidy's the one trick pony. It's a great trick when you see it the first time and when we saw that evolve. Fantastic trick. <laughs> you know, but after a while, you're like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, thank you for agreeing with us a thousand percent, Dory. Uh, so give it to Trent. Why not? Trent Beretta. Leave Trent's a Long Island person. Nah, fuck it. We're uh, idiots. We're wrong. It's going to Orange Cassidy. <laughs> so you're going Orange Cassidy? Yeah, I'm going to go Orange Cassidy. All right. Or- Orange, punch your way to this one. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Trent. You're going to go gonna go code orange for that. Uh, with that. You don't get what the hype over Orange Cassidy is. I know what the hype over Orange Cassidy was. It's just because marks are ridiculous. And he came out with the with the markiest, most ridiculous thing ever. It's too indie. With Orange Cassidy. Yeah, that's the problem. It yeah, was too it's indie. Not, it doesn't it do, it's it's great when it's live. Absolutely. It's, really it's fantastic great to when see, it's live. And he is really good at doing it. But it doesn't it doesn't translate well to like prime time. 
for whatever reason. Yeah. And he got over. I, the crowd loved him. Like, when AEW actually had a crowd, he was super over. It's really good, yeah. And I, I liked it when he actually turned on the wrestling, and he is not a bad wrestler. Not, not at all, but actually. There's, He's really good. There's no character development. You remember when they did the debate? And he actually like started. He was like, oh, he was like a savant. Yeah, Hilarious. like that was great character was great. building. Yeah, <laughs> but then it's like not really been much after that. Like it's just, uh, I don't know. His name's also That's orange. The thing. It, it also doesn't help that his his orange punch is just a Superman punch in the skies. Yeah, like what, what what's wrong with Byron Keith? What's wrong with that name? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna go with Trent Beretta on this. Uh, I'm, to, still to going, cap- I'm still going orange. It, it's fine. I, I totally get it. You got to give the crowd something, right? Uh, so again, give the people before what we they get want. To- Excalibur yeah. is still in AEW. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine yes. Corey Graves and Excalibur on commentary. That'd be great. Yeah, we sound alike, but one of us wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. So here we're gonna do our AEW bonus points predictions for our prediction war. Got three of them. Will here. Uh, so first one, um, how many matches will have blood plus or minus one? I did plus or minus two before. I'm gonna do plus or minus one. I'm guar- we're guaranteed the cage match is gonna be bloody as all hell. Yeah, I'll. I'll I'm also just... guaranteeing Anarchy in the Arena is gonna be ridiculously bloody. So plus or minus one. Yeah. And there's what seven matches? Eight, eight, eight matches. Nine. 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 Yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> Fred said each of them. <laughs> let me. <laughs> Let me do three. You're going to do three? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think three is right on the money. I think two is a safe bet. And I don't think, I don't think one, I don't think one's a safe bet. And four, I think four has a better chance of more, more, more of a chance it's four than less of a chance it's one. Yeah. I'm. So I'll go, I'll go three and put myself in that buffer zone. Dory saying all the men's matches are going to have blood, which is a high possibility at this point. Um, ooh. I'm also gonna go three. I was gonna go two because I know I know the two guarantees are Anarchy in the Arena and that barbed yeah. wire cage match. And that barbed wire. I think my, so. You got give give yourself three, and it's a buffer between four and yeah, two. But I I think we're going. I think Swerve and Christian Cage are gonna have some blood too. So you gonna go? You gonna go four? No, I said three. You gonna go three? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go three. I, I I can't figure out another fourth one. Moxley's known. That Mox is a given. Moxie is also known to bleed for the sake of bleeding. Um, so, so is Brian, Dan- D- Brian Danielson. So is Brian Danielson, but he's already in Anarchy in the Arena. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go three. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes four uh, for that. Uh, next question that we have here, uh, which we didn't talk about because he is not a part of Anarchy in the Arena because he still may or may not be injured. Does Kenny Omega come back? Do we get a Kenny Omega sighting? Mm. That's one thing that that show is potentially missing. That's just one thing the storyline is missing between the elite and the AEW thing. God, I, I hope he comes down to the ring and Taz just goes, "Whose side is he on?" <laughs> <laughs> we don't know whose side he's on, and then he joins the elite, which would make sense. So do you, do you, do do we get a Kenny signing? Yeah, he, he he does the Hogan leg drop and everything. He does all of it. <laughs> oh my God, trash, he's the third man. Him. He's the like, third like, man. <laughs> I would say there's gonna be trash in the ring, and a lot of fans are gonna. Actually, there could be a lot of trash in the rings; they can all reach. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you have Excalibur yeah. in the ring. You gotta tell these kids to shut up. This is the new <laughs> world order of professional wrestling, bro. <laughs> like, that's the whole thing. Up in the ring. <laughs> Tony Khan comes up for a hug. <laughs> does the Bischoff hug? <laughs> yeah, does the Bischoff hug? Uh, yeah, I think Kenny shows up. If it's one, um, if it's one pay per view that you're gonna do, is it in double or nothing? Is one of the core AEW pay per views? Weird that we have to say that because remember when they were only doing four a year? Um, yeah. <laughs> and if you're gonna push this into the summer, Kenny has to do something. So I'm going to, I'm actually gonna agree. I think Kenny does show up, but I think just for opposition purposes, because if it's gonna be the elite, and you know the elite love to hog the spotlight, Kenny included. I think he joins Team AEW, so you get the little bit of the fake infighting. And he turns later. Yeah, he might turn later, but he's going to go up against the Bucks initially. 
Because he's gonna, yeah, no, he's gonna, he's gonna be seen as like you know how Stephanie was seen as the good McMahon. Yeah, I think Kenny's gonna be like the good, the good EVP for a while. I think that's, I think that's the angle you got to go with. Uh, last but not least, in total AEW fashion, is the next, is our last bonus question for this. Do we get a brand new signing at Double or Nothing? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Who's out there? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they'll sign PB Smooth. I'm waiting for PB Smooth to get signed, but they're not going to sign him yet. Um, PB Smooth. Oh my God, it's Dana White. <laughs> What's he doing in the impact zone? <laughs> no, but shout out to PB Smooth. I don't know if you know as well. PB Smooth actually won an NWA championship. Did he really? Yeah, he is the first ever NWA Midwest champion. <laughs> good for him. Yeah, good for him. He's entitled to title. Yeah, he's he's the first one to ever hold that title. So congratulations to him. So he's he's doing good stuff. He's doing good work. He's got a lot bigger too. Good. He got is he l- bigger than Carmelo Hayes. <laughs> well, he's six. He's like six eight. So yes, t- like late. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, he was a division one. He was a division one player at Hofstra before you got there. But yeah. Back when Hofstra had football. No, basketball. Oh, basketball. Do you want basketball? Oh, we, still, we, still got, we still got basketball. Yeah, you do. I, we're in the same. Me and Towson. Right. Shout out Speedy Claxton. <laughs> yeah, your last great player. <laughs> your last great player. Uh, but that's the but that's the last of our predictions. So no surprise signing for Will. I'm just going to say for Chits and Gigs, Tony Khan can't help himself. He'll find somebody to sign. Uh, He's going to sign like himself. <laughs> Guys, big announcement. I've extended my own contract. <laughs> He gives himself an ironclad contract. He gives himself a signing bonus <laughs> and a title shot. Exactly. And he calls himself king of the ring. What if Tony Khan comes out and says, I'm the king of the ring? He goes, I am the sultan of the ring. <laughs> I rule over Agrabah. <laughs> it's a total Tony Khan thing to do. It really is. Uh, but be it as it may, this mega card for double or nothing in total AEW fashion, Sunday, 8 p.m., Eastern Time, Las Vegas, MGM Grand Arena. How well is it going to be? Is this going to be one as in exploding barbed wire deathmatch one? Or is it going to be 10? It's like the original Double or Nothing when John Moxley showed up 10. God, I just want to be like, I just want to see Tony Khan sing that I can show you the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> it's called an empty arena. <laughs> Uh, yeah, dude, I don't, I don't know. Is Six? Anarchy in the Arena <laughs> essentially an empty arena match these days? I hate to say it, but it's not going to be an empty arena. <laughs> yeah, dude, like, here's the thing. The Anarchy in the Arena works when you can shoot the full arena. <laughs> like, Who knows? Yeah, I saw I saw this conversation online. Like, actually, no, it was Matt Man. Matt Man was talking about it. Um, it's like AEW needs a Royal Rumble-type match that they they're do. known for. Yeah. Um. And it's Anarchy in the Arena it. And it's just like, well, I mean, kind of, but there is nothing. I don't, I can't think of one that something, a, a match type that they could do that is Royal Rumble status with that much stake and entertainment on the line you could do yearly. They don't have one. Yeah. Like it's honestly, I think it's impossible. I think Royal Rumble is just a black swan event. Yeah. They, it was, it, they, Pat Patterson was, Pat Patterson hit lightning in a bottle. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's like this. I, I, and I don't think it's AEW's fault because TNA couldn't do it. They tried with like Ultimate X. Yeah, and, and like the briefcase thing, which was pretty clever for Money in the Bank. Yeah, but they, you like at least WCW had War Games, but not WWE has War Games. <laughs> so, like War Games was one. Um, Rumble's another one. Didn't they have the Money in the Bank? Yeah, was one. Didn't they have? Didn't AEW have that like the brass ring thing, which they never really? Yeah, used? The bra- they got the brass ring, which is kind of, which that's just a knockoff Money in the Bank. Yeah, like clearly, they had like their battle royal thing, like I say, like the, the suits and it's like the, the space. Oh, the and wild card, kind of the wild card battle royal, the wild card, which was cool, but it's always a pre-show match. Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool concept. It's a, it's a it's that- a modification of the Royal Rumble, which I thought they did really well in. Yeah, like it's a cool concept that needs a few tweaks, but there's something there. Yeah, especially with the wild card because I didn't. It, the rules were a little confusing to explain because I was like, so "Okay, you, you came, came out, out in suits. As, as the suit. You came out in suits, yeah." So it's like four people come out at once, but they're not affiliated with each other. Correct. Which, which, it's a li- once you wrap your mind around it, like and it you makes see sense. It, yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah. It's actually <laughs> it's actually pretty good creatively. Yeah. 
but it needs it needs a little bit of tweaks. Like if they did it with factions, I think it would make sense. That would work. Like if you had if you had a faction battle royal, they have enough factions. Kind of yeah, but they I mean it's AEW. They could always have factions. Yeah. Or if they like a tag, if they if they only did tag teams, a tag team, a tag team Royal Rumble. That'd be interesting. You know the the thing with you know. I mean, Zarian's correct. They don't have anything that where there's stakes online. Anarchy and Arena, there's no stakes online. It's just pride. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They had something, but they 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 kind of killed it with MJF. The Dynamite Diamond Ring thing. The Dynamite Diamond Ring could have actually been a thing. Yeah. And it's yeah. It was. It just was an. It was an enhancement to MJF's character, which he doesn't actually even use. I like, but he did use it. He used it when it counted. He used it when it counted. Which, which, yeah, which is why, it, which is why it worked. And the fact that they, they, he kept, he won it what three years in a row. I don't think he ever. I don't think they ever did it again. No, they did. They did. They did. They did I think they did the tournament twice. Fretz, you can correct me. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure they did, they did the tournament, or he defended it once a year. Something like that. I think he won it. I think he won it twice. Can he win it twice if he never lost it? Or he, or he retained it. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Looking at it. Right, so yeah, I mean, I don't know, but yeah, because the, 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 that was really cool and it worked for MJF. And if that's something you can just pass along, like if if Sean Spears won it, that would have worked. Yeah, like the I feel like Diamond Diamond Ring had a lot of potential, just didn't really go anywhere with it. That's the only thing that they could have like made them stand out. But they have there's nothing, there's nothing yeah. annual where it's like, oh, this is an event we need to tune in to bring people in before we get to the big one. Yeah, you know, I mean, they got they got the pay per views though. They also, do. all in and all out is just confusing. And they're a week apart. Yeah, which is also even more confusing because it made sense. Like that first show was all in. Should be there. Was all was all. It in. was all in because that was the right, so it was Cody the Bucks and Kenny putting going all. That in. was the fu Meltzer, yes. Right, and then and then once they pulled it off, they're like, all right, we went all in. Now we're gonna go all out. Yeah. So that so like that I think that's a good one and two, mm-hmm. but it's it's sometimes it's confusing to be like okay which one was your WrestleMania? Their position. Which one was your nineteen eighty four? Which one was your WrestleMania one that kind of changed everything? Which is it was supposed to be your All In, and I think their issue is especially with All In, All In needs to stand alone. You can't be like hey we're gonna pack out Wembley and then a week later we're in Chicago. No stop, like yeah, let it breathe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let it breathe. And if you want if you want to do like a um because you know because WWE does spring and summer. They could have done fall and winter. Yeah. As their n- number one and number two. Yeah. Double or nothing is a great name for a pay per view. Absolutely. Fantastic. So it fits with their we are gambling on ourselves gimmick. Revolution a was a good one as well. Revolution's a good one. Yeah. Right? Because their whole thing is all of their pay per view names for actual pay per views fit with the company mission and the goal of the organization. Correct. Yes. Which is we are betting, we are wrestlers betting on ourselves going all in. Yeah. We. We we went we went we did double or nothing. Fuck it. Yeah. Like we're now we're doubling down again, and now we're going wow. all out. Exactly. And the whole our point is we are going to revolutionize wrestling. Yeah. So though that as a those big are your four, four. Yeah. Makes is really good storytelling. Yeah. If they actually told that story, which they don't. Um. Which they don't. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's it's just, yeah. And they and you. I feel like you should work around those. I mean, they also added full gear, which I think was like the fifth. Um. Yeah. You know, which is their fall thing. And full gear where you made sense too, because it's like, all right, we're we're now we've we, made we, it. Now we have, we're gonna go into full gear. We've made it. Now we're going into overdrive. Yeah, we're going into full gear. Yeah. Yeah. So like, all of their names had meaning behind them. Yeah. And you could have stuck the diamond, like the, the, the I want to call the Diamond Dallas Page ring, <laughs> the, 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 the 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 MJF ring, the the Battle Royal on another one, the the was that also on Double or Nothing? There's the wild card. Yeah. So there were there were things they the pieces they still could put together to kind of put so co- so co- cohesion story behind the company. Yeah. Because that's what WWE is right now. It's it's a story with the characters, a story with Triple H. It's also a story of the company. Yeah. Which is what we can all get behind as fans and as stakeholders. Yeah. They have hit all time highs. <laughs> right yeah. Uh, so you said six point five for Double or Nothing before I forget. Yeah, six and a half. I'm gonna go seven. I'll give it a seven. There, there's they got it. There's a, there's obvious decisions that they have to make, and then you know the the crazier decisions, especially around surrounding the main event. Um, Holy shit! And everything like that. We're gonna see what happens. Fretz is wow. Fretz is going for four. So we're damn Fretz. You watch AEW. <laughs> Dory's going for five, and she's being extremely generous. Wow, we're we're a high stakes people here. Um, so there, there it is, folks. That is our show today. That is AEW Double or Nothing, King and Queen of the Ring. It is going to be a wild, wild uh, Memorial Day weekend for professional wrestling as per the norm for these last couple of, of years. Any final thoughts, Mr. Tarashuk? 
Yeah, so I'm actually checking stock right now, and literally. For TKO. Dude, yeah, for TKO. So let me get this. What's up? So you know the market clo market closes at four, but it's still after hours trading. Of course, because why? At, why not? Right. At at four forty, it was a hundred and seven dollars. At four forty one, it was at a hundred and ten. Wow. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> like, ever. Like, I mean, GameStop jumps $3 in 60 seconds. Like, this chart is just like <laughs> 93 angle. So, it's going to be a good morning when it opens. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it really is. Invest in TKO, ladies and gentlemen. That's my advice. They are a knockout. It's not financial advice. It's just, you know, advice. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, not finance. He's not a financial <laughs> advisor. <laughs> this is not a financial. I work with advisors. I am not an advisor. Exactly. There you go. There you go. Save yourself there. Uh, but yeah, any other words besides TKO stock going up? I know, dude. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have stock reports every week. <laughs> <laughs> We should give yourself like one of those weird like financial ticker like the music's in the back while you start reporting stocks on everybody. God, I should, you know you know how like does uh, do you know who Kyle Dunnigan is the comedian? Yes, I do. So we should just do as a face swap, but it's me and Jim Cramer. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic. All right, this is what I mean, this is what TK with stock is doing. <laughs> smash, smash, smash! Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> Did you, did you watch UFC this past week? This sucks going to the <laughs> Oh, my God. Before we, before we begin, did you see the last UFC? Did you see the guy fanboy over Randy? Yes, because it was in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> this man won a match and ran out of the ring. And hugged Randy. Randy's like, I don't know who you are, but give me a hug, Come man. Come on, man. Friggin ad. Randy's like, dude, they paid me to be here. Like, I don't watch this. <laughs> Why am I bigger than you? Randy's <laughs> definitely a UFC watcher. I can totally see him watch UFC, just not go to the events. Mm. That and Triple H yeah, is like, hey, pal. Yeah. Yeah, I need, I need Rand Rand Randy Orton's just like, 10 years ago, me and John Jones did drugs together. <laughs> 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 he got suspended the first time because of Randy Orton. <laughs> he got hit with the three most dangerous fighters in UFC. <laughs> P-E-E. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you gotta talk to charles one day and ask him about his hate for john bones jones dude <laughs> you gotta I, i'm probably gonna be my like fault, my fault. it's not john it's bones it's not john bones he does he actually likes john bones my fault he doesn't like uh dc he hates dc oh I, no that's that's fair dude. <laughs> he hates dc I, no i i respect dc because i love him as an announcer but when he has a fight i'm like who the fuck is this fucking meatball tapping everyone out <laughs> I almost feel like it wasn't fair him at him at heavyweight because he would just gas everyone out and just tap him out. You just gas and tap. It was, he plays his boys. Let me guess. He's a boring fighter. I don't know what his hate with DC is. I just know I bring up DC's name and he hates him. Because he's, he's a wrestler. And wrestlers in UFC are typically boring. Yeah. But they're very effective because they also do like jujitsu and they get you on the ground. They roll you around. And they tap you out. Yeah, they wear you out. Yeah. It works. I mean, DC's an excellent fighter. One of the best ever. Great announcer, good guy, but yeah, watching him fight, it's like, why is this? What what is Taz doing here, and why is he so good? He got to kind of dress the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, wow! All right, so that being he's a secretly Italian, yeah, right, <laughs> from Brooklyn. <laughs> so with that being said, folks, let's get this show on the road to the post show. Will, if you may. <laughs> gentlemen you have been listening or watching kings of the rings podcast episode number 376 king and queen of the ring or nothing i am not nothing i am your host king ricky rose you can find me at ambassador bigs across all social media outlets b-i-g-z ambassador bigs find kings of the rings podcast at k-o-t-r underscore podcast across all social media outlets as well like share subscribe leave us a five-star review buy some of our awesome merch as i'm wearing right now but you can't really see but links to all of that are in the description below if you are listening to us make sure you're listening to us on wrestle Attic radio the cure for the common wrestling podcast and follow wrestle addict radio socials at addict underscore wrestle on twitter and at wrestle addict radio everywhere else the links to all of that are in the description below will tarashuk uh ladies and gentlemen i don't, I don't have plugs i don't like doing unplugs because uh, i don't really have anything to plug anymore uh, yeah, I guess yeah, not, so right? Will Tarashuk. It's me, it's me. It's Willie T, Decent Thomas, A-R-A-S-H-U-K. I don't know what that at Will Tarashuk is for anymore. I don't have Twitter. 
So it might be my Instagram if you want to see pictures of me from like six, seven months ago. Maybe. So yeah, yeah you can follow me there. Yeah. At Will Tarashuk. It's just the ads is there for for it's like garnish. It's like mint in a it's like a mint leaf in a bowl. Of fruit. A little mint julep right there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right there. There you go. Mint julep. That's a good word. Julep. Mint julep. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a traditional drink of a Kentucky Derby, by the way. Uh, anywho, uh-huh. yeah, it is. It is. Uh, which, by the way, Belmont's coming up. Uh, so when we come back next week, folks, hopefully K will have their back realigned or whatever. Uh, hopefully we'll get a <laughs> K's taking care of Eddie Kingston right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nursing home K. Uh, when we come <laughs> back next week, we will find out our king and queen of the ring. We will find out what is going on with the anarchy in the arena that is. AEW and what the summer is going to look like here on out for your entire professional wrestling world. So until next week, folks, goodbye. Good night. We'll see you soon. And by the way, it was not at all a fluke that we did not invite you slack to the show. Cause honestly, we, 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 we didn't really care about much to have you on. So fuck you slack. No, we just didn't care enough to remember that too. We'll see you next week. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.